In this video, we'll see a potential energy principle of the kinetics of particle. That means we have a system here, and then the system is just contained two particles at it is end with 10 pound and then 5 pound particle, and then the road is a rigid road, and then it will pivot over the point O here. And then when we release from rest at its position, then it will just swing and then it will strike the spring, and then once that the system will have its own position with respect to the impacts of the spring. And then the question stated that the light road is pivoted at O in the case 5 and 10 pound particle. And then if the road is released from rest at theta 60 degree and then swung in the vertical plane, then calculate the velocity of 5 pound particle just before it hits the spring and then in the dashed position. And the second question is the maximum compression of X of the spring. And then here is the assumption is given that if the x is small so that the positions of the road when the spring is compressed is essentially horizontal that means we may not have any change at the final positions of the system when it strikes with the spring and then it will remain as horizontal so this is the question and then the working mechanism is simply in this way we'll just try to focus on when the system is just collapsed with the spring and then making some impacts over that so let us solve this problem. Let's start from the given part. So theta is uh, given as 60 degree here. And then the other parts are given on the diagram. So we don't need to write this. Now, what are the required parameters? The first is just to evaluate the velocity of two. Let's say this is particle and particle two. If we just say that so we are asking to evaluate the velocity of two once we it before strike the spring and then the second part is the maximum compression length is x of the spring so those are the two unknown parameters so to evaluate this just let's take out the initial and the final conditions of the system now just before strike the spring what will happen let's just draw the free body diagram of that so this is just a 60 degree inclination from the horizontal now when the system just revolve and then try to touch the spring we'll have the horizontal layout at the equation status and then let's take this is particle one and then this is particle two this is one and two so particle one and particle two, this is the initial position. That means the initial position is just drawn with a blue color. And then the final position is drawn with red color. So let's take this is essential and that's a final concept. So in this case, for point one, let's take the kinetic energy one. Let's T one as a kinetic energy for particle one. So it will be equals to half m1 v1 squared in this case since the system is released from rest there is no any velocity for both particles so the initial kinetic energy will be zero and then what will be the energy related to the position that means the energy that means the potential energy related to the gravity is equals to mg h1 that means h1 means the distance from the point to the final destination so let's this is h1 so since this is l1 so h1 will be just the functions of a sine value so this is 60 degree we know this portion so which will be equals to m1 g times h1 is just l1 sine 60 degree l1 is given as 12 inch and then if you convert into feet that means if you divided this with 12 it will be one feet and then l2 is given as 18 inch and then if you divided with 12 you will get into feet so it will be 1.5 feet so l1 and l2 values will be this one so vg finally will be just mass times graph that the weight is given as 10 pound so 10 times 1 times sine 60 degree and then finally it will be 8.66 for particle 2 this one will be just the elevations of that so it will be h2 and then we know that t2 is also half m2 
v2 square so it will be zero because it was released from rest and then what will be the potential energy so the potential energy due to the gravity will be since the our final position is in the upper one that means it will have a negative energy that means it is in the uh, lower part so it will be minus mg times h2 mass of 2 then this is just vg and then substitute the numerical values finally we will get as vg is equals to negative 6.495 so this is just vg of particle 2 now potential energy of the system that means at the initial condition will be evaluated in this way so ti is equal to t1 plus t2 for both particles so this there is no kinetic energy it will be zero and then vg initial will be is equal to the summation of the two parts for particle one and particle two so it will be 8.66 minus 6.495 and then finally it will become 2.165 so this is for the initial condition. Now let's evaluate for the final condition. For the final condition, we'll just use this position. So once I have this, we can evaluate the energy related to the potential and then the kinetics. So let's do this. Now the energy related to the potential for both particles, that means V, G final is zero because there is no any elevation at that point. For the kinetic energy, that means T final is equal to T final 1 plus T final 2 because the two particles will have different velocity because they have different lengths or radius from the revolved axis. So what will be T final 1? So T final 1 will be for a particle 1, so it will be half m v1 squared and then t final 2 or the final velocity of the particle 2 will be half m2 v2 squared so the first one is m1 let's insert the numerical values for particle 1 half m1 is weight over gravity that means the weight is given as 10 so 10 divided with the gravity is such 2.17 because we are using us customer unit times v1 squared and then if you evaluate it, you will get 0.1554 V1 squared. And then for a particle 2, half the weight is 5 over such 2.17 V2 squared. And then it will give us 0 0.0777 V2 squared. So this is the kinetic energy. That means the kinetic energy final will be the summation of the two if you sum up them you will get 0 0.1554 v1 squared plus 0 0.0777 v2 squared both particles have the same angular speed that means omega is the same for both cases for element one and then element two so it is particle one and particle two and then once we have this this is l1 this is l2 so v1 is, is equal to l1 times omega this is just the speed for the particle one and then for v2 is equal to l2 times omega that means omega is common so omega will be equal to v1 over l1 and then it will be also equal to v2 over l2 that means v1 over l1 is equal to v2 over l2 so we have to express v1 in terms of v2 because we are trying to find out the velocity of the particle 2. So we have to evaluate the velocity of 1 into velocity of 2. That means V1 is, is equal to L1 over L2 times V2, which is equal to L1 is 1 feet and then L2 is 1.5 feet, so times V2. So finally, it will give us 0 0.66 seven v2 so this is just the relationship between velocity one and velocity two if we substitute these values into the previous equation which is written in the forms of kinetic energy here we can get the relationship between v1 and v2 less this is as equation asterisk so 
Finally, once we have that, Tf is equal to 0 0.1554 times V1 squared. In this case, V1 is 0 0.667 V2, the whole square, plus 0 0.0777 V2 squared. And then finally, it will be is equals to 0 0.1. 468 V2 squared. So this is the final kinetic energy of the system. We know that from the initial and from the final position, since there is no any work done, so the final and the initial parts will be zero or change in T plus change in V will be zero. That means changing kinetic energy plus potential energy will be zero. So change in kinetic energy will be final kinetic energy minus final initial energy plus the potential energy is only due to the gravity that means vg final minus vg initial is equal to zero we know this part so in this case we know the initial kinetic energy is zero and then we know the value of vgi and then we know the value of tf so let's substitute all this numbers and then finally we'll get that part is. so ti it was zero previously and then the other one vgf is also zero so the only part is will be tfi and then vgi that means tf minus vgi is equal to zero so let's substitute all those values then we'll get our interest so tf is given as 0 0.1468 squared and then we know that vgi is 2.165 it is a numerical value so this means tf is in this case 0 0.1468 v2 squared minus 2.165 is equal to zero that means v2 squared is equal to 2.165 divided with 0 0.1468 and then v squared will be 14.75 and then finally, under radical of that will give us the V2 value 3.84 feet per second. So this is our answer. So this is just what we want to know about the speeds of or the velocities of particle two. And then if you want to the velocity of the particle one, you can just simply use this relationship. That means if you just multiply with 0.667, you will get the velocity of one. Now, when the case of the maximum compressions of the spring, that means the system will, the overall system will be at rest. And then at that position, previously, the spring has its own unstretched lengths once it applied with the force. So finally, it will just compressed into this portion and then it will have a change in X at that value. So our aim is to find out this change of lengths then. By applying just the potential energy principle, we know there is no any kinetic energy that means change in T will be zero because the initial kinetic energy that means Ti is previously zero and then the system comes to rest after it compressed the spring so T final will be zero so their changes will be zero so no kinetic energies will be there and then the final potential energy is also zero so the final energy related to the gravity is also zero here and then we know that the initial VG is evaluated previously. So VI or related to the gravity is evaluated previously. And then it was 2.165. So previously it was evaluated in this way. So once we have this, let's write the overall energy principle. That means change in T plus change in VG with respect to the gravity plus change in V or the potential related to the elasticity of the spring will give us zero. So it is now zero. We know the value of the change in Vg. And then the only unknown parameters uh, will be just related to the spring force. So this implies that zero plus zero minus 2.165 plus change in V is just half k x squared. So it is equals to zero. So the only unknown parameter is x here. So it can be written in this form. So x squared is equals to two times 
2.165 over k and it is 4.33 divided with k now let's evaluate the this value so x square is equals to 4.33 over k is not in the standard us customer unit so we have to convert it it is just 200 pound per inch so we have to convert into pound per feet so to convert that let's just multiply this with the equivalent of one feet here the equivalent one feet is 12 inch so inch will cancel out and then finally we'll get this value that means which is equal to 4.33 over 2400 that means pound per feet so finally we'll get the value of x into feet which is 0 0.00184 feet squared so if you under radical that we can get the x value so the x value will be 0 0.0424 feet and then if you want to know an inch you can multiply this with 12 though so it will become 0 0.51 inch so both can be the answer so this is our final answer for the given question so this is it